I'm Dom, and welcome to my workshop. Well, Sunday afternoon, and oh, what a morning. Completely unexpected trip to the boot sale. Wendy came along, she had a great time. Poor old Wendy, she cut her foot. She got like a quite a deep cut in one of the paws on her back foot, but um, she's absolutely fine. Luckily, she is a troublesome dog, and this is definitely not the first time that this has happened. This is maybe the third, fourth time that she's done something stupid like this. I don't know how she did it. She's just running around, in, uh, who knows what, caught it on a stone or sharp bit of something. Well, I've got all the stuff for that, like, to, you know, sprayed it, cleared it out, washed it out, bandaged it up. She's, it's all good. She's absolutely fine. Still troublesome as ever. I had no, not really planned to go to the boot sale. Just kind of woke up and was like, oh, you know what? Let's do it. The weather's good. Got some, got some spare change. Let's go and see what we can find. Lots of plants. Got a couple of runner beans, actually. I did buy some runner beans. Starts at 9.30, not super early. Every single stall, it's just proper boot sale stuff. They are clearing out their spare rooms, the sheds, granddad's old garage. They are literally clearing out everything. And it's, some things are expensive, but it's worth it. They're nice, nice things. I don't mind. It's still cheaper than shop prices and some of this stuff. It's, it's rare, so hey, it should be expensive. I did not leave empty-handed. No tools this time. No spanners, no tools, no toolboxes. But I did get this i have no idea what it would be for what they made it for i'm going to use it for putting my paperwork in and stuff like that in the office that's what i use my other one for that's slightly longer um it's exactly the same as my other one just a little bit smaller i don't know why i just like the the shape it's just beautifully made look on the bottom look handmade made in england isn't that nice four pounds I think that was, a, that was a bargain, wasn't it? That would take me hours and hours to make that. Beat that, sort of like lip the flange to the edge, roll the top over, it's got a wire edge up there, roll that round, and it's so nicely made for four quid. It's like, it's mad. Don't go down to Ikea and buy modern, horrible plastic stuff. Get to the boot sale, get a beautiful handmade copper tray for four pounds. Um, what else? Oh, the Karun board. There was a Karun board there, standing up at the front of someone's bench. It was just like, oh my God, a Karun board. Uh, two series ago now, we restored one on the repair shop. And Cindy helped me with the painting of the most, the finest, straightest lines. But the, the whole surface should be sort of like a mirror polished, super shiny surface. Um, the really obscure thing, I'd not heard of them before, not heard of them before at all. And I saw it on the stand, I was just like, oh, I don't mean I don't want it, I'm not going to buy that. But then towards the end of the day, I was thinking, oh, should I go back and get it? Should I go back and buy that? I was like, no, I don't need it, I don't need it. Walking back to the car, there's some guy looking really pleased with himself, walking along, there he is, carrying the current board. So I was like, good luck to him, someone has bought it, I'm really glad that someone saved it. And now I'm back in the workshop. I have got a problem here, actually. I don't know what's to blame. I feel like it might be that, bearing in mind Anthony's had that sitting outside and there was a fair bit of wildlife on it, but we have got a spider infestation uh, and I'm in trouble. I walked in the door and I was like, ah, oh, God, my hair, the spiders. Um, and look at my motorbike. Spider webs. I've already pulled some of them off. I think this is why I think the Randler is to blame. All those little white dots. Uh-oh. They are all spiders. Look, there he is. Look, in there. Oh my God. That is a disaster. See, this is what happens. I've spent too much time at the repair shop. My workshop sits here and I'm never here. Now it's the spiders are taking over. Luckily, we've got a week or so left at the repair shop and then I'll be back here full time. So spiders, time to move. <laughs> Find somewhere else to go. Super chuffed with my little copper tray. I'm gonna head down to the repair shop now. Uh, the van is still filthy. I know I've been saying I'm gonna wash it for the last two or three weeks, but it's gonna happen this time. I'm gonna stop at the petrol station and give it a good old wash. <laughs> Okay, skip forward a couple of hours. I'm at Goodwood. The aerodrome is back open, cafe's open, people are here. L listen, that plane there is ticking over. It's so good to be back. Oh my God. I used to come here quite often Sunday afternoon, sit here, 
have a little lemonade and a brownie in the airfield, in the aerodrome there. Oh man, just wandering around the little car park area and I found this awesome little minivan. Oh, look at it. I do really like these. Very cool. Really like that. Oh, hello. Isn't this just the most amazing place? Oh, I love it here so much. It's pretty cool to think back in the 30s, two guys that started Ranala did it to make the panels on that. And now I'm standing here next to it. I know that might be a replica. I think it is. I don't think, I can't imagine it's a real one, but that's pretty special, isn't it? I'm back in the workshop. The truck has just turned up with all my new goodies in it. But uh, look quickly at this stuff on the table first of all, because I didn't just get the wheeling machine and the crane. The swaging, swager, bead roller, whatever you want to call it. Turn this handle, turns these. Made by CMZ. It's a really nice machine, really lovely. On a little stand, very nice. And then look on the table. Look at all of this. Now, all these pieces came from Hoopers, which if you're not familiar with, are a very big coach building company from back in the day. Look at that vice. It's seized. Oh, that's why it's wet. I've been soaking it already with WD. But it's, I've not got a vice that big that's got the quick release lever. And then I've got these, this, uh, it's like a stake anvil. So it's round on this end and then flat on that end and then these two, it's such a shame they've been outside, but you can see the moss and stuff, but they have, look, they've got this square shank on the bottom, which fits inside like a stake in an anvil. Um, this one's got it as well. So they fit into a special holder. More lower wheels for the Ranler, brilliant. But these are just perfect. These are for smoothing out metal, so this shape, it's got ever so slight radius there. It's just, they're just perfect. And this one is a complete dome. I need to spend a long time. That should be a mirror polish that, and it will be once I finish with it. But at the moment, that's it. But the best thing, look at this. I've never seen anything like this. It's cast iron, solid. And it's, this has got the sort of female part to hold that square shank. That's the part that you'd use that shape to hammer over. Then that square part fits in there. That huge slab of cast iron would have, I think it would have bolted to a bench and overhung, something like that. So I need to get thinking of a way, I wanna make a stand for it, almost like a kind of cantilevered, because you wanna keep the space around the front where you're working free as possible. So there's space to move around and space to work the panel. But it, instead of bolting it to a bench, I kind of want it to be freestanding. So, I'm gonna have a think of making some sort of a Y or an X or some sort of base out of girders or something that is kind of cantilevered so the front half hangs over and then I'll make some shackles and bolt it down. But anyone's got any good ideas of a design for the base, let, send me a message, let me know because that is a project I cannot wait to do. Look, look at this. <laughs> Gotta say a big thank you to these guys, KE Kent. They've been brilliant. The driver's been so, considering the situation we had to get it out of, the driver's been so good. The crane's gonna go outside, but the wheeling machine, we're gonna try and get it through the door. And I've cleared this sort of space, a little runway here, and try and get it in with his crane arm and zoom it forwards as far as we can. I don't know how well that's gonna go, but we're gonna give it a go. Fingers crossed.
this is my new wheeling machine. I've removed the dull, ugly layer of paint that was over the top of it and revealed this mad pistachio mint choc. Actually, you know what it is? It's mint choc chip, isn't it? Could do with some ice cream. I haven't restored it at all by any means, but I have stripped the layer of paint off, given it a good clean up. It still needs more, but it's pretty much there. I've polished the top wheel and I've taken it all apart and greased it. The threaded rod on the bottom was a little bit bent, uh, so I took that all out, took the wheel off, straightened it all up, put it back in, re-greased it all, and it's working really nice now. And this is my mint chop chip paint scheme. I don't know why it, there's an S there, but that was underneath the paint, that's quite cool. I just love it. Look, the lower adjusting wheel is orange. My mint chocolate chip paintwork there, and then red on the, the adjuster. I believe these are the original spindle brackets, these ones here. They're made of steel and they don't have the extra tab on the end. So the other ones that I got with the other wheel from Anthony, they are aluminium and they've got a bigger, bulkier bit on this side. So still unconfirmed which are original, which aren't. I think these look more original to me, but um, hey, anyone out there, let me know. I gave that a bit of a go on the lathe. It's much shinier. It's got, I've put a grease on it now, so it's not super shiny, but it's come up a lot better. The best bit about this one, I've got the plaque. My other one was missing the plaque and I was gutted about it. So I'm really pleased to have that on this one. The other wheel is here, still on its pump truck, still standing. You know what, having two wheels is actually really quite handy but for reference, because already I've now put the lower cradle that I've off of this wheel against the other wheel and they're ever so slightly different. So there are some differences actually, which is quite interesting. But this is it. So this one is stripped down and ready to go to Pope, go and see Paul for measuring up and he can do his drawings and make the 3D drawing of it. The other one is all cleaned up and rebuilt and ready for action. So I should use it, shouldn't I? I should make something on it. This is a request. I've already done how to do electrolysis. Um, it's done really well, but there's been a few people, a few comments saying, Oh, that hammer was perfectly usable beforehand and that wasn't rusty enough. What would it do on something really rusty? Like, and, and people sort of knocking what I was doing. I was really just showing the process, showing you how to do it. I've never actually used electrolysis on something that rusty before. It is really seized. This has been sitting literally outside, exposed to the elements in a field. I think it's getting on for 30 years. He was trying to remember, but it's at least 20, maybe more. So this has been outside. It is completely seized. I've rebuilt one of these on the repair shop that are in a similar condition. It actually didn't look that bad. Um, but we got there, I got it done. If you would like to see electrolysis, what can it actually do? So shall I make another video where we, where we restore this vice, leaving it in the electrolysis tank, probably for a few days. Will the electrolysis alone free it up? I don't know. In theory, it should, because it removes all the rust. Let me know if you want me to do it. This is very strange. Monday morning and I'm in my workshop. The rest of the team are still at the repair shop. They're still filming, but I am no longer required. <laughs> How sad. Uh, no, I'm back there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I've got Monday and Tuesday to myself. How weird is that? It's a very strange feeling. I've already had an engineer come over who's actually from the industrial estate opposite me, he's literally over the road. He just walked over and he's spent a good half an hour looking at all of the components that I need to get turned for the Ranola wheeling machines. All, like the little, all these little bits, you know, this bit, this bit. A lot of the components are made on a lathe and he's got an awesome CNC lathe, he's got manual lathes, he's got all the bits and bobs in there. And he's a lot smarter than me when it comes to doing things like that. But anyway, enough Ranola stuff. Today is not about Ranola. Today, we are going on an adventure. I got a text the other day from my friend John, um, just a picture of a motorbike in a bush. The next picture, it's quite clearly BMW motorbike. It's like, no way. What better excuse to drive to Essex and go and see my good old friend John. You've never met him before, but I've known him for, oh God, since I was, 16. Um, he was the mechanic at the VW and Porsche place that I used to work at, Karma Connection. So I was the boy in the workshop. He was the head mechanic and he still is. And he's a mechanic, does it lots of air cooled stuff like that. He's a brilliant guy. He's got a staffy called Diesel. So Wendy doesn't know what she's in for. <laughs>
There he is, look, the man himself. Perfect timing. Hello. <laughs> come on then, John. This is why we've come down to see you. There she is. Come on then, give us a lowdown. What have we got? We have got a BMW R75 stroke 6, 1975. 75. Been left out in the rain for about 20 years. In the bush. I've got yeah. the pictures of it in the bush. In the bush. Oh, this is, what a dream. Um, so yes, we have got a bit of work to do, but I'm very pleased with it. Look at, look how that's polished up without oh, any polish. You haven't. You cleaned up the exhaust. I, the first thing you've done. I, no, no. They, what, I've washed the tank down. There was lots of green moss and stuff. And it looks really good, actually. It's doesn't it? It is actually better than I'd hoped. It is better. Fifty-five thousand miles. Fifty-five. I know. She's a tourer. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think Bloody that's... Bloody hell. I think it's dry. It's a big battery. It One of my Bonneville was like half that. Is, look, that's proper pinstriping. Yeah, proper pinstriping. Isn't it? There's a luggage rack. Luggage rack. With the panniers. Yeah, nice. Oh, there's potential though, isn't there? Oh, there is. When you look, it's... It's so easy as well, because this is like a sub, they call this the rear subframe. It literally bolts here and here. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. And this, you see, I didn't realise, but this is all like the air box. So it all looks like part of this engine. Well, that cast. Yeah. This, that's all that, just there, air box. There was another bit this side, and literally, so the air filter feed comes out onto the carb here. It looked really nice. Where's the, you got the carb? I've got the carbs. Um, one's still on, the other side. Um, oh, I can see the potential. It, I can see, I like it. I've had it cranking over. No, you haven't. I have. Really? It's, yeah, and it seems to have compression, so. Nice, loose, high mileage engine. <laughs> it feels good, it feels really feels... strong. So, My God. I mean, all the parts are available, gasket set, timing chains, everything. Not lots of money. It's been walking the park for you. Time. No problem. Time. Yeah, time. Is the I know, tell me about it. You know. So, I'm just going to plod away. How if it, exciting. If it takes a year, if it takes 10 years, it doesn't matter. That's it. <coughs> See, even Diesel's happy. Diesel <coughs> is ecstatic, aren't you? It's over the moon. Come on, He's when saying, he can't wait to have a go on the back. He's going to be sitting up here on the luxury. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is what I'm up against, look. Maybe he's got half a mouse nest in there. No, it's, so that's obviously steel, and yeah. that's seized. No, it. no, that's not steel. It's all alley. Is it? Yeah. Uh, but obviously this is, there's steel components. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the problems oh I've got God. to strike away here. Yeah. Uh, and obviously this is meant to slide up and down. Yeah. Welcome to the treasure trove. Oh, wow. Aladdin's cave here. Not so much a treasure trove, the messy trove. What a day to come down. What on earth is that? Is a 1944 Kubel wagon. 1944. Second World War. Up to it in our neck. I'm oh, glad probably. to see you got the instruction manual. That's it. That's, <laughs> yes. Is that very, helpful? Very rare instruction manual. <laughs> yeah. We talk to the we talk to the animals too. Um, Complete with gun, of course. The grenades, grenades. Yes. Well, you never know when you might need one. Yeah. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed the trip down to see John. Hello, lovely to meet you. My very good friend. How long? Well, we've known each other now. I was sitting and working this out on the way down. I think it's like t over 20 years. It's got to be over 20 years, mate. Because I was, what, 16, 17 at KK? Yeah, you was a, you was a baby. Little, little girl. I still am. <laughs> a I still cherub. Am. I still am. You still are a cherub, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. There we go. The old Johnny, Honest John tour. Nice one. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Take care.